guys, welcome back to another video. Hey, how you doing? Okay, so today I'm going to be doing one of the six part series um, of the most well known cases of Ed and Lorraine Warren. I've decided to do this as a series because it would be too much to put into one singular video. Just a quick thing before we start. This was all from the internet that I collected and I'm compiling it into one video. Okay, so if you don't know who Ed and Lorraine Warren are, here is a bit about them. So Ed was a World War II veteran and a former police officer um, who decided to become a self-professed demonologist after studying the subject. His wife Lorraine claimed to be a clairvoyant and medium who was capable of communicating with demons and spirits etc that they discovered. So this case is going to be on the Perrin family. In January 1971 the Perrin family moved into a 14 room farmhouse in Harrisville, Rhode Island where Carolyn, Roger and their five daughters began to notice strange things happening almost immediately after moving in. Let's go back to the year you and your family moved into the farmhouse. Mm -hmm. uh, walk, walking in through the front door how 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 much time passed before you knew that something was different about this house? About five minutes. <laughs> wow, wow. What was the first thing that happened that clued you in? Well, we bought the house in December of 1970, but my mother refused to move at Christmas. Imagine mm -hmm. that. <laughs> so we moved in the first week of January 1971 in the middle of a snowstorm, swirling ice storm. Mm -hmm. And my dad, it was a whole caravan and it was chaos. Of course, moving days tend to be. Um, but my dad handed me a large box off the back of the truck and said, take this to your mother in the kitchen. So I went through the parlor door and I had to walk the entire length of the house to get to the kitchen and the pantry. And it was more than 110 feet long. Mm -hmm. So I walked into the dining room and I saw an oddly dressed man in the corner of the dining room. And I greeted him because I was a polite child. I said, good morning. And he didn't respond to me. His focus was entirely on the elder gentleman who was moving out of the house who had sold it to mm -hmm. us. And uh, so I kept going and I walked in the kitchen and said, mom, who's that other man with Mr. Kenyon in the dining room? She said, there is no other man in the dining room. And then Nancy came in, Christine came in, Cindy came in, and the last sister came in and said, that man in the dining room just disappeared. So immediately you knew that something was up with the house. It only started small. Carolyn would notice that the broom went missing or seemed to move from place to place on its own. Um, she would also hear the sound of something scraping against the kettle in the kitchen when there was no one in there. Um, she would also find small piles of dirt in the centre of a newly cleaned kitchen. The girls began to notice spirits around the house. When you are in the house and you're sleeping, it's bedtime, you're with your sisters, you guys are all on that top floor, and each of you are seeing different things, you're hearing different things, did you immediately talk to each other about what you saw or did you keep it in? The first night or two that we were in the house, of course you're adjusting to a new environment. Um, I thought that the sound that I was hearing was wind in the eaves, mm -hmm. but that wasn't the case at all. And then my darling little sister Cindy crawled into bed with me. She said, Annie, can I sleep with you? I said, sure. I pulled the quilt back and let her in. She snuggled up real close and she said, I hear voices in my room. And they're all talking at once, but they're all saying the same thing. And I asked her, what are they saying? And she said, there are seven dead soldiers buried in the wall. Though for the most part, many of them were harmless, there were few, however, that were angry. Carolyn allegedly researched the house and the history of it um, and found out that it had been in the same family for eight generations and many of them had died under mysterious and horrible circumstances. Several of the children had drowned in, near, in a nearby creek, one was murdered and a few of them hung themselves in the attic. What, what about the history of the house? What were you able to find out about the house uh, over, over the last years of your life? I mean, I know you didn't know as much while you were there, but later in life, what did you find out? My mother actually did extensive research. My mother is at heart an historian, mm -hmm. and she did extensive research on the house. Uh, she found out that Mrs. John Arnold hung herself in the barn when she was 93 years old. 
we found out that there were uh, a couple of other hangings in the house as well, uh, women that had claimed their own lives. The spirit that was depicted in the film, Bathsheba, was the worst of them all. Whoever the spirit was, she perceived herself as the mistress of the house and she resented the competition that my mother posed for that position. Said Andrea Perrin, the oldest of the girls. It actually turns out there was someone called Bathsheba Sherman who lived in the house during the mid-1800s. She was rumoured to have been a Satanist and there was evidence that she had been involved in the death of a neighbor's child. Bathsheba Sherman lived in the house. She was accused mm -hmm. of, uh, and she was acquitted. Well, actually, it never even went to trial. She, it was dismissed from an inquest. Mm -hmm. But she had a child, an infant in her care that died, and they found that a needle had Im been impaled at the base of its skull, and mm -hmm. it had died of convulsions. So even though she was exonerated from that at the inquest, in the court of public opinion, the accusation stuck, and she was tried and convicted and lived a miserable life um, for her entire life. She lived to be in her 70s, which was old for her time. And it never, it, that black cloud hung over her in life and after death. The parents believed that it was Bathsheba's spirit that was tormenting them. According to Andrea, the eldest of the girls, um, the family experienced other spirits as well, um, that smelled like rotten flesh and would cause the beds to rise off the floor. She claims that her father would enter the basement and feel a cold, stinking presence behind him. They often stayed away from the basement, but their heating more often fail. Um, so the father, Roger, would have to go down there. Over the 10 years that the family lived in the house, the Warrens made multiple trips to investigate. At one point, Lorraine conducted a seance to attempt to contact the spirits that were um, possessing the family. During the seance, Carolyn became possessed, speaking in tongues and rising from the ground in her chair. Andrea claims to have secretly witnessed the seance read uh, in the movie there was a scene where your mother was possessed mm -hmm. um, that wasn't real life but there was a seance that happened when the Warrens were in the house with you mm -hmm. what happened during that seance it was far more intense than anything that they could have portrayed on film um, it did not happen in the cellar it happened in the dining room and I knew from that moment I was never one to believe in demons I knew evil existed but uh, and I still don't know exactly what a demon is but I will tell you that they brought a priest and a medium with them to the house, a full technical crew that were trying to film this event. Mm -hmm. And um, they inadvertently opened a door that they could not close. The medium invited the spirits in, and with them came something which attacked my mother. Um, I don't, if she was possessed, it was for a brief period of time but I saw it all with my own eyes. And what I know is that whatever attacked her was not of this world. It spoke through her in a language that does not exist on this planet. And it levitated her in the chair that she was in. And within a split second when it was done, curling her body into a ball, you would have expected to hear bones breaking. It threw her into the adjacent parlor about 20 feet away in literally a split second. You saw this. How old were I you? Fifteen. Fifteen years old. Documented yeah. in the Warren files mm -hmm. as well. There were several people who saw this yes. all happen. What happened in the house after that night? Did things get worse? Whatever was allowed in that night subdued the spirits. They were very, very quiet for a long time afterwards, several months. And my mother kept wasting away. You saw the photograph of her in front of the um, fireplace. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was just so frail. My mother moved in there as, you know, a model material woman, just strikingly beautiful. And she just literally wasted away. She lost so much weight. She changed inexorably in ways that were shocking. And then one night she came out into the parlor and the dining room had been shut down for the night, but she heard voices and she turned and she saw an entire family having dinner <clears throat> in the dining room at a table that was not our own. Uh, a woman was cooking in front of a fireplace that had been sealed shut for more than a hundred years. She told her children to go take their seats at the, on the benches at the table and two men were sitting on the other side. She was there and they were here and one of them looked into the parlor and made eye contact with my mother and then nudged the man beside him 
and pointed her out and she was the ghost. Wow. wow. That's when she understood that we were living in a portal cleverly disguised as a farmhouse and that's when she fought her way back to us. Though the movie's version of events culminates um, with Ed performing an exorcism rather than the seance, Lorraine insists that she and her husband would never attempt one as they must be, be performed by a Catholic priest. After the seance, Roger kicked the Warrens out, worried about his wife's mental stability. According to Andrea, the family continued to live in the house due to financial instability, instability until they were able to move out in 1980. But during the time that they were, you know, that space, they had to try and learn to live with as many as nine spirits. They finally sold their home and fled to Georgia, um, bidding goodbye to Bathsheba and the other spirits. Oh, so they thought. When you guys left the farm uh, and you moved on with your lives, where did the spirits go? Are they with you? <laughs> I mean, are they there? Uh, well, Do as, they visit? As my mother so aptly put, we could leave the farm, but the farm will never leave us. Um, we found out, uh, we thought that it was our great escape. Mm -hmm. We did, and half of us did not want to leave at all, and I'm in that half. Uh, however, my mother had told my dad, she said, Roger, if we don't sell this place, I won't survive another winter here. And he believed her. And we bought a house in Georgia, a beautiful farm in Georgia, a new farm. The house was like 20 <laughs> Brand years <new>. old. <laughs> so what could possibly right. be, you know? And uh, we got down there and Mrs. Warren called. Uh, I don't even know how she found us, but she did a couple of months after we were there. And she said, Carolyn, I want to tell this story, a book, a movie. You know, offered them a boatload of money and mm -hmm. life-changing money and my mother said no Lorraine no and she said you at least need to discuss this with your husband well that night dad came home but mom didn't mention it to him yet she went down to throw a load of laundry in the uh, washing machine and a 200 pound door that was bolted to a wall came over on top of her and dislocated her shoulder and gave her a concussion and when Mrs. Warren called back the next morning, she said, absolutely not, Lorraine. I don't need to discuss this with my husband. Please don't contact me again. Wow. Wow. What changed to allow her to have you write the book? It was as if a bell went off in my head in yeah. August of 07. And interestingly, I didn't even tell my family that I was writing the book because I didn't want to be discouraged. I didn't want to hear any reticence about it. I knew that the time had come. 30 plus years had lapsed and I felt that the world had matured in its consciousness about spirit and that it was time. And I was no more than six weeks into it when I got a call from Hollywood. The first producer called me from Hollywood and there was no conceivable way they could have known I was writing a book I had told no one. Is it crazy that they kind of, the, they attached, like the ghosts attached themselves to the family and they followed them? So I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to smash the like and subscribe down below if you are new. Hi, I am Katie and you are my Kit Kats. Hey, how you doing? And yeah, I'll see you next one. Bye!